Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today I'll be doing something quite different and that's starting to build up um, a new mod project for my friend here in Dubai. Um, he was actually the, the one that I made the Vintage Black mod for, which I'll link in the description as well. Now he's back with me to do another interesting, very different style of mod, which is not your usual SKX sort of thing. Um, so he's brought me these two watches and we're gonna do something a little special with them. So this, I'll just show you them first of all. This is, let me remind myself, is the SNK um, 623K1. Uh, so this is, I believe, in fact, let me check, I think it's about 37 diameter. Yep, 37 diameter case. Um, this is what I would call the Seiko's Explorer dial, but this has a special little party trick and that is the day wheel is actually located here at the six. So as we pull the crown and let's cycle it, as you can see, it's got a completely different day wheel system, which displays the day at the bottom quite different. Don't you, you don't really see that on many other models. Um, now this style is gorgeous. This case and integrated bracelet, I would say is definitely an acquired taste, not for everyone. And we both believe that this dial deserves a more standard, more explorer style case, because with those numerals as well, the black color, um, this is gonna actually end up as a bit of a premium Seiko Explorer mod with that special day window as well. Now, looking over at the other one, this is the case we're gonna use for that dial. So this is the SNK 375K1. Um, now, pretty cheap watch. Both these watches are quite cheap, actually. Easily available online, on Amazon, and things like that. Now, this case is um, very reminiscent of, for example, a Rolex Explorer with that, that conical smooth bezel. Of course, standard Seiko Crown of Seiko 5, Crown at 4. Um, now, the huge advantage here is, though the bracelet is quite nice, I've reviewed another watch, the SNK 355. Um, that I made for my girlfriend a few months ago. I used a similar bracelet on that one. This one is also 37 millimeters across, um, but the huge advantage here, here is that you can easily replace this bracelet um, and it's got the regular type lugs compared to this style. So the dial on here is that interesting sort of I don't know what to call this. It's, it's almost like a dive bezel countdown sort of thing, timing bezel, um, timing dial maybe, but to be honest, it doesn't really make much sense to me because you're never really gonna be able to time anything unless whatever your timing always starts at 12 with the second hand. So yeah, it's quite an interesting design. I think it's purely just aesthetic, but nice red and black kind of colorway there. Interesting hands as well, these arrow shaped hands uh, arrow shaped um, hour hand I should say and uh, it's got the black day and day day and date wheel um, now that is something we also want to integrate into this dial so the full list is going to be this dial into this case and we're also going to change the day uh, sorry the date to a black background date to match the black dial which I think is a good shout um, and finally we're also going to put some Mercedes hands on to this dial inside this case. So it should hopefully look like a really clean, really nice, classy Explorer style mod in this case uh, with that 369, or well, in this case 1269 dial, um, but that added interest with the, uh, the, the day wheel at uh, six o'clock as well. So that's the idea. Um, let me get uh, started on this and I'll share some of the process with you in this video. And at the end, of course, we will see the finished product, which I'm expecting to be a beauty. Um, so keep watching and don't forget to subscribe. That'll really help me out guys as well. Okay, so the case, uh, sorry, the bracelet's removed from this one and I'll set this aside for the minute. I'm actually gonna keep the whole dial movement, hands, everything together because I do have a spare black 
uh, day wheel to use in that one. So most of the work is going to happen on this. I will take both movements out though when it comes to it. Um, so I'll show you the process of removing one. So I've just unhooked the bracelet, save me messing around with the lugs and the, as they're a bit different. This is a simple kind of tool I use. Um, I actually just use two of the pins. You can use all three, but it takes a bit of time uh, setting it up otherwise. Um, so we are gonna find a good spot to hold it. And it's as simple as just giving it a turn with one of these tools. Now, I know some of you watch these videos and are keen to have a go yourselves. Um, doing this has no effect on your water resistance as long as you retighten it. So even if you have an old SKX or any other kind of dive style watches, maybe that you're a bit scared about the water resistance, removing the case back does nothing to harm the water resistance. Um, as long as you screw it back in, of course. So this is something that I was always scared to do on other watches before, but since I've started modding, I do this quite regularly, even on Swiss watches and so on, just to have a look at the movement and check things out sometimes. So um, nice clear case back. These will be rated, I believe, to about 30 or, 40, 30 or 50 meters. I'll have to check on the reference, but a lot of that comes from how well this glass is seated, how thick it is and so on. So um, yeah, this does affect the water resistance, but taking it on and off doesn't. Um, the only thing that really does affect the water resistance is changing the crystal, uh, which I'll come to a bit later. So now to get this movement out, as you can see, there is the 7S26. Both watches have got the same movement. Um, the simple standard Seiko S 7S26 movements um, really decent movements, quite pretty as well in some in some ways. Um, always nice to see that, that mechanical beating heart. Um, so what we're going to do next is they're exactly the same on most Seiko movements. That tiny little dot there. Let's see if I can show you a bit more clearly. Where's my tool? Here we go. Right there. I'm going to press on that while pulling the crown out to remove the crown. See if I can do that at this angle. There we go. So crown's popped out. And now we are gonna try and gently lift the movement out. Um, it probably won't drop out on its own. Sometimes they don't, but well, most of the time they don't. So uh, could we, I usually try and hook under, using this kind of tool, uh, find a spot with Obviously nothing that's going to get bent or damaged. Apologies, this isn't the best angle to show you, but this is all I can do for the moment. And drop it out. And I've got this 3D printed, so I'll zoom back out, 3D printed movement holder, which uh, really helps. Although this design is a little bit loose, so you've got to be careful. So there we go, that is the dial out. You can see nice glossy black. Um, quite hard to work with these dials because it's so easy to scratch it. Um, so I will be very carefully removing those hands in a minute and having a look underneath because I'm curious to see how this day wheel works because I have not used this kind of um, this watch before. I've, I've not seen this dial before or this the underneath of this movement. Um, so I'm curious. So the next thing we're going to do. Um, I'm actually going to, I should have really done this before, but I'm going to move the hands into a more easy to remove position. So we're going to find the hole for the crown and refit the crown inside there. I'm going to try not to move the movement too much because I don't want it to actually um, run while I'm doing a lot of this. Um, so now we're gonna remove the hands from here. How I do that is using a puller tool. This is again, a really simple tool. Most, most basic watchmaking tools will have this little grabber that pulls the hands off. Now, just to help protect the dial a bit and the hands actually, I'm gonna use this bit of plastic. So this is the way I do it. I simply put it over the hands push the tool on and drop the hands off. 
That way this will add an extra bit of protection against any scratches from this tool. In theory, once this tool is used properly, it's only plastic that's rubbing on it, so, but you can still end up with marks. So nice and clean, no scratches or anything on there. So that is the hands removed. Let's have a look now at, I'm just gonna show you, go into here with just a basic pin tool. Uh, same on the other side. Let's try, zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. Steady, let's see if we can get this off without breaking the feet off, which would be nice. Here we go. So there is the dial. I'll put that to one side and keep it covered. Of course, this is going to get cleaned before the new uh, hands and everything go on it anyway. But there is the movement. So interestingly, the day wheel is much the same sort of shape and everything as the standard one that you'll see quite often on these models. I don't have another to show you here, um, but it's just printed differently. That is the only difference actually, um, which I don't know why I didn't think of that, but yeah, so this is actually dead easy to, to edit. Um, now the edit we're gonna do to it though, the mod is putting this date wheel onto it. Um, now, in order to do that, we do need to take some parts of this movement off. So um, I'm gonna first remove the day wheel from here using that little C-clip in the middle. I'm gonna get a little screwdriver. This little screwdriver, which I've actually filed down and demagnetized, um, and that's gonna lift up this little C-clip. Um, easier uh, to do than it might sound. Um, I'll see if I can do it on camera here. We just get one edge. And try and pry it up a little bit. Now, struggling there at this angle with this camera, so I'm gonna have a look at it myself and show you the outcome. So, I've managed to start prying it up a little bit. I just had to get really close to it to be able to see it properly. So we're gonna just rotate this while sort of pulling up on it, it just jumped off then and it landed right here. <laughs> so I'm pretty pleased that isn't disappeared somewhere. I have had these fly across the room, so be careful. What I should have really done is kept my finger over the top. Um, but fortunately, there wasn't much springiness in it. Um, so now we're gonna remove this day wheel, which should just be a case of prying it up. And here is much the same movement we have seen before. No differences there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to be able to get this date wheel off, I'm gonna remove that screw, that screw, that screw, and that screw. And I'll be back once I've unscrewed all of those. Quite simple. Um, they do take a little bit of a, a push the first time, but fairly easy to unscrew as you go. So I won't bore you watching me unscrew four screws. I'll do it and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've removed the four screws. I'm now gonna lift this plate off, which um, did actually come off already. So I've just placed it loosely where um, it was uh, supposed to go. So as you can see, there is a little, little cog, a little gear attached there. Um, this is quite delicate, but it is fairly easy just to grab it and pull it off without disturbing anything else. So we'll leave that to one side, it is all one piece. Now looking at again, in order to remove uh, the day wheel, it is actually held in by this other plate too. Um, we have two little gears here. Um, these have to be remain here of course, and there is another one under here, these plastic wheels. Um, these can break quite easily, so sometimes if your date doesn't change or something like that, it's possibly because one of these teeth is missing. You've got to be a bit careful with those. Um, so I'm going to remove the next part of the plate, which just springs off like so. Um, again, apologies, I'm not a watchmaker. I'm not trained 
I, I just do this as a hobby, so I'm not sure what the parts are actually called. I'm going to call this plate number two. Um, this has the little spring which actually pushes, uh, lines up your day, uh, sorry, your date um, with the correct window. So if you find that it's a little sloppy, possibly because this isn't really springy enough, um, I'll show you that when we put it back. So now we have, oh, and I should have said on the other side of that piece, there is an, an actual little gear as well um, that drives the day change. And again, I'll try and explain as I, as I go um, what I've learned about this movement so far. Again, I'm no expert, so please don't take, <laughs> I know there's probably experts in this screaming at their screens, um, but this is just how I do it and it's worked for me. Now, essentially everything's off so we can remove the date uh, disc or the ring, I should say. So I'm just gonna lift it off. And here is the movement with no, no date or no day wheels. Um, so you can see some of the jewels in there. You can see it's still running down through that hole. And I've kept the crown in the whole time. Um, I do that just so I can set the time properly later. So we're gonna put the black one on. Uh, so it is pretty straightforward. It's basically the reverse process, but it is a little harder. So we're gonna place it where it's supposed to go. Now it is mostly held in with those plates in the correct position. Actually, I've just noticed Oh yeah, it does fit. I was worried it didn't quite fit. Maybe perhaps these were two different sizes, but no, we're, we're right. Um, now what we're gonna do next is put this plate. Just grab it. The plate with the spring back where it came from. Now it has two little pins, one at the top, or hole, sorry, one at the top and one in its elbow. And those go on that gold colored pin there and that gold colored pin there. Um, this holds itself in, so there's no, no way of screwing this down or anything until you do the next part. This is quite tricky, so I may need to, um, I'll try and do it on camera, but I may need to have a look without uh, the, the phone or the camera in front of me like I have now. Let's have a look. Okay, one of the pins is on, the other pin is on as well. I've just realized that was no way in the frame, but I'm essentially holding it down here um, and I'm gonna see if I can let it go, I can, great. So the next job is gonna be to put this plate back on. Now this plate has uh, the little cog on it, so you gotta watch out, this little arm, um, again, affects how the day, day dates change works. Um, we're gonna place that on. Uh, it should be this way around. So the best way to do this is just to look where those screws are gonna go. You can see the recessed parts and where the screw holes are. Um, the problem is I always find as soon as I drop this, this other plate pops out. So it does take a few goes. Let's see if I can do it first time. Pretty decent, I think. I think I've just about got it. This is going well. So I'm gonna try and get one of the screws in to sort of help hold everything together and then we can check out a few of the pieces. So how to get the screws in, I grab them with my tweezers and I just place them in where they're supposed to go. like that, and hopefully I will be able to, I've completely missed the hole there. I'm gonna to have to zoom into this personally and, uh, and replace those plates now. But you get the idea, we're essentially placing it and very, very lightly screwing them down. So I'll do that and I'll be back with you. So I've got all the screws in 
Um, I did have to loosen them a couple of times and just make sure everything's nice and flat on there. The key test here is does the date change as you would expect using the quick set date function and it should be nice and defined so it should click into place. If it's a bit sluggish or something's rubbing, um, maybe worth loosening these screws, um, just pressing on it, make sure it's completely flat, all the gears are interacting as they should and it should work. Now the other way you should see this little star shaped wheel turning and that's gonna be the, uh, what actually moves this. So um, I'm gonna now place the day wheel back on. This is quite straightforward. You just drop it on there. Spin a bit so you can see a bit better. And I usually just lightly kind of jiggle it around. And if you just go backwards to a little bit so you find a place that it will fit. And usually, okay, it's not quite fitted in there. Let's try again. It wants to fit, but we need to attach the uh, little C-clip. Um, so I'll do that next. So how I do it, this is quite tricky because it can fly away. There's a little C-clip. Drop it over the pin. And then tweezers are great for this because you can put pressure on both sides at the same time and you hear that little click to uh, sort of tell you it's gone in. There we go, now it's properly seated. So you can see the quick set move this way and this way and we are done with this movement. So that was actually quite straightforward um, thanks to that fairly simple day wheel construction. Um, I guess makes sense for Seiko as well. Now I'm sure you're all wondering what does that look like with this dial, so we'll drop the dial back on. And I think you'll agree that black day wheel, sorry, date wheel, I keep calling it the wrong thing, was an excellent choice because it just makes it look a lot more balanced. Um, I know it's not a silver applied date window or something like that, but um, the white definitely stood out there and this looks way cleaner. So here we have a really quite a nice looking movement. Now I can't wait to put these hands on because I think that with Mercedes hands is gonna look awesome. And um, so that is what we're gonna do next. So the next stage is attaching the hands. Now we've gone for Mercedes hands on this. These are actually some of the easiest hands to attach, I find, compared to some of the designs I've used because they've got nice circular ends. Um, so what we're gonna do here, when we touch the hour, we have to turn the movement. That's what I meant about this movement holder being a bit loose. Uh, you just have to hold on to the movement anyway. It's a bit annoying, but it does really help for attaching hands, especially. So I'm gonna keep winding this until the day and date start to change or more specifically the date actually, because that should change first. Here we go. So as soon as that ticks over, there, I'm gonna attach the hour hand. Uh, so the Mercedes hour hand, use a bit of Rodico to, to help me hold it. As I said, I really don't wanna damage this dial because it is so glossy. So I'm just going to place it right about there. So we can have a look and adjust it a little bit. That's good. So that's pointing right up to 12. And then actually I used to use this kind of hand pressing tool, let me zoom out. 
and pressing tool like so, and I would put the dials here, or the movements here, and plunge these buttons down. Um, I've decided actually it's easier to take the pins out and do it manually. So all we're gonna do, again, let's zoom in to see this, is press on here, and that should get the hour hand on just fine. You can press quite hard actually, because it does have a little seat to sit into. And then it's important, hard for the camera to pick this up, but I'm gonna look down the side of the movement, make sure this is nice and level. If not, it might just need a bit more of a push in one particular angle. Um, and it's a good idea to keep pressing it in various positions. That way it tends to make it a lot flatter and a lot more straight. So let me um, check this one out and we can add on the minute hand as well. So here's the hour and minute hand on, and it's looking really, really cool. Uh, love that Explorer style. Um, also brings out all the silver elements of the dial. Um, so there's actually quite a lot going on on this dial, even though it is just a black dial, but with that day window at the bottom as well, I think this looks really cool. So just a little check. I always try and look at the obvious markers like the 9 and 12, the every hour should line up, and the 12 as well. I've gone a bit too far there, but it points straight up, 6 as well, and of course a date change. So as we go towards midnight, we should start to see it change, and then what time does it actually change? It's about seven minutes too, so that is fine as well within the standard tolerance. And then the day changes fully after 3 a.m. So all good, um, I'm happy with that. There, I mean, you can be a perfectionist to get it lined up absolutely dead on, but that may require taking hands on and off and so on, and it risks damaging the dial. For the most part, um, this is as as good as I think I can get it, so I'm gonna move on. We've also got a second hand to put on. I'll add the second hand and I'll show you the movement running. So this is just my method of attaching the second hand. So I actually stab the hand into a bit of Rodico and I stick it onto the dial and then I'm kind of, I can manipulate this a little bit to get the position right and then press it on with one of these simple tools. It's almost like a pen. You could probably use a ballpoint pen to do this. Um, second hand is very delicate, so you've got to just give it time to fit in the right place. And once it's in, push it down and pull this off and it should be moving around the dial. So let's have a go. So here's the dial with the hands installed. Now for the second hand, I do actually use this kind of press tool and uh, that just helps it keep really straight as it's pressing on. Um, for such a delicate piece, it's important to keep it completely vertical as you go down you find it jumps about a lot so it's a pig to do but um, using that press really helped me just then a um, little bit of dust or something on the dial there which will remove clean up with a bit of Rodico um, and let's have a look at the loom actually so there's the loom charged up a bit um, now the hands uh, on the camera do appear more blue um, in terms of loom than the dots on the marker, but in person they are much more color matched as well. This is just off a light, so it's not a really good indicator of what it's actually gonna be like, but it's just cool to see it. Um, to be honest, uh, even if it is a slightly, well, it's gonna be a slightly different loom. Um, on this dial it works because all the markers are just simple dots around the edge and the hands are bright and in the middle. Quality of loom is good. I believe these hands uh, are from DLW. Um, so, you know, high quality parts there. Now, we are gonna move on to actually put this in this case next, which was the SNK375, I believe. So I'm basically gonna follow the same process I did before, but I'm just gonna uh, store this movement and the hands and dial for perhaps a future project. Um, and let's see what that dial looks like in this case. 
Um, I am waiting on a crystal, so I'm hoping to be able to add a sapphire crystal to this case as well. But for the meantime, let's case this up and see what it actually looks like as a bit of a Rolex Explorer style watch. So in the last part of the video, I showed you my method of assembling this, this movement and dial combo. Um, now it's time to put it back into its case. Now, one thing I did want to do with this SNK375 case is uh, change it to a sapphire crystal. Um, however, unfortunately, the crystals uh, I thought I could use from DLW, which actually did or do perhaps still state that this model is compatible, um, they are actually not compatible because this model requires a 29 millimeter crystal, 29 by um, 1.5 millimeters thick. So if you're looking for a sapphire, get them elsewhere. Um, the LW do have a range of crystals, but not for this model, unfortunately. Um, so anyway, moving on, um, we are happy with the hands, even though the loom is a little bit different. It's that blue Rolex style loom. Um, so it's time to just to case it up. So this is how you would recase a simple watch like this. Well, not so simple anymore, but it was um, to, uh, reminiscent of any other Seiko 5 sort of watches, the uh, small crowns at four and so on. So um, the case is uh, fairly straightforward. The key thing here is we need to make sure there's absolutely no dust or anything, any smudges or anything like that on the crystal. I just use a microfiber cloth um, to obviously clean it. It's important to also clean the top because then it's hard to see where the dust particles are. Inside, I do it under a halogen lamp um, because I find those kind of lamps pick up every last little speck, even better than broad daylight. So um, find one of those down, down lighter sort of lamps in your house or, or maybe get a halogen old style lamp because you'll find it picks up a lot more detail than uh, regular lights or LED lights for that matter as well. Um, you'll also want one of these this to basically blow out any dust from inside. Um, so let me go ahead and do that and I'll prep everything else ready to go in. Okay, so the case is all clean and ready. The dial I did clean before, so I'll give it a final little, little blow with the blower, get rid of any loose bits of dust and so on. And now the way I do it is to keep it actually flat facing me and drop the case over, over the top um, and just drop it on like that. Now, sometimes they can be quite loose and fall straight out. It's not like this time though, where it's actually stayed put. So now we carefully flip it over. And here we will be inserting the crown back, um, assuming that everything's lined up. So let's have a quick look. So you can see this little gap for the crown tube and just popping the crown in should find its place. Uh, it's useful to sort of give it a bit of a turn and it'll clip clip back in. Um, before I start messing with the crown though, I'm gonna push on to those bare metal parts, something like here, and you can move the rotor by hand as well, somewhere around here where that hole is, um, and maybe two or three places around there just to make sure everything is seated nicely. So I just use a simple tool, uh, like a spring bar removal tool or something for that. So if you just push somewhere where you know you're not going to fault against anything else, just be extra careful near the balance. So now we can quickly have a look at the front. And that is looking really, really, really good. Um, now I will need to do an extra little visual inspection. Of course, give it a wipe away any smudges or any dust on the, off the front and have a careful look for any little bits of dust, fibers, anything like that. It's very difficult to spot under this light, so I'm gonna move on to my, my halogen light, as I mentioned before, to do that. As long as I'm ready, this is ready to be uh, basically completely assembled back. So I'm quite happy with how this is uh, cleaned up. Everything is good. Um, so time to put the case back, back on. This is dead easy. Um, yeah, make sure it's clean, obviously. I've just given it a quick wipe and drop it on. Just spin it with your fingers. 
get it nice and tight and then the rest can be done with the tool. It doesn't need to go too tight, um, as long as the gasket's in there, it will take up quite a lot of slack and you know you don't want to make it too tight for the next person once they're perhaps servicing or replacing or modifying this watch further. Um, that is looking awesome. I love all the reflections off the, the more legible hands now, as well as those 12, 6 and 9 markers. The black date definitely uh, looks good in this case. And yeah, that, that rather unusual day wheel as well. Um, definitely an explorer looking watch. Uh, so we're going to put it back on the original bracelet as well. Here it is. Um, this isn't actually that bad but it is very much a folded link bracelet, as you can see down here. Um, and the way you size this, by the way, I've already sized this one, but in case you were wondering, sorry, the link, end links are falling off, uh, is here, these pinholes, I'll quickly show you. All you would usually do is put some sort of tool inside this hole and it's easier if it's on the table when you do this. Put it this way around. Zoom in. There we go. So you just slide the link out through the hole like that, then grab it with some pliers. And once you remove it, you can unhook these parts. This, uh, you will need to keep at least one link one of these spare links in the end, otherwise it's not really possible to put it on. However, I did manage to take some of these extra links off, even though they weren't supposed to be, uh, for my girlfriend's watch, which has the same case, but she has absolutely tiny wrists. Um, so even, even the lowest setting is too big. So how to put the bracelet on now? These hollow end links aren't the best, but for a relatively small uh, watch and a fairly, you know, when these are a lot bigger, they've got a lot more space to sort of bend and so on. Once it's on the wrist, this bracelet isn't is actually quite good. Um, for uh, the price, of course, this is a very low budget uh, model um, and probably one of the best value models actually, especially with this dial now, but generally um, the movement, the automatic movement for like under a hundred dollars, I think it is from a pretty, famous brand is pretty good. Now, um, just so you don't ever get this wrong, quick little tip, this, if it's a clasp like this, this folded part should stick up towards the top of the watch. So this side. So this is how I always remember which way round to put bracelets because it's a pain, especially if you've got an awkward one, to remove them later. So bracelet goes on the top Try and zoom in for you again. And just using my spring bar tool, that came in fairly easily. It is easy to fit this bracelet as well. A little bit fiddly, but it is certainly easier than some other bracelets, even higher quality bracelets I've used. And let's swing this over so we've got a bit of, a bit of space to see it. Let's get this side on as well. That side's in. Just see, make sure I can see. There we go. I'm sorry you couldn't see that, but never mind. It was a pretty quick process. So let me clean this guy up and show you a bit of a final presentation. So here is the finished product. Now, I hope you'll agree. I think this is a really classy, um, really pleasant mod. There's something about it. Um, I think it's got some charm, which um, I don't always find the dive watches have on the more expensive mods with all the um, finer materials perhaps, but this uh, dial combination with this case, now you could put this on a nice, maybe suede leather strap and it would just look just like a vintage Rolex Explorer. Um, and I think just literally all we've added is the hands and we've just changed the, the date over and the case. So 
even in Seiko's own catalog, you can mod watches fairly easily and come up with something quite unique. I'm really happy with this, with how this came out. Um, I'm sure Stevie, who whose uh, watch this is, will be dead pleased with it. It's uh, he, he's contacted me through Seiko Mods Dubai. So if you are interested in doing any of this kind of thing, please let me know or even ask for advice. I've had a few people just ask about various parts and things I'm posting on Instagram there. Um, so really successful project, not too expensive. You do need to buy two watches and basically cannibalize them both. However, you, what you end up with is one really nice mod. Um, these cases are also available from the SNK uh, 355, which is I think in some cases a bit cheaper. Let me know guys in the comments what you think I should do with this dial and handset because um, that was from the donor watch as it were. So I'm going to keep this and use it in the future, but I can't think of what to use it for. That was from the SNK 375, this case originally, I'm thinking of a dive case or maybe even an SKX. 013 or something like that in black and red. Let me know what you think. Also, the next video I'm going to post is going to be what's in this box. So Orange 5KX, new mod coming soon. Really excited to, to share this one. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for all your support. And I'm loving doing interesting projects like this and I will keep sharing them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.